Hey scrapbookers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap and welcome to the Beautiful Noise Page Kit Assembly Workshop. I'm so glad you decided to join me and by now I hope you have your uh, page kit and somehow a copy of your instructions whether you printed them or you're using them on a device that'll be helpful and I also have my 12 inch trimmer along with an accordion pocket file now I know a lot of you are new around here so welcome thank you so much for being here if you don't yet have your accordion pocket file no worries uh, first of all if you need help uh, finding out how you can make one of these for yourself reach out to us and let us know we'll get you on the right track otherwise just keep a larger space with room for four piles so every time I say put something in pocket one and two put it in pile one and two so I'm gonna go ahead and take my accordion pocket file and put it on the uh, the back of my trimmer here the trimmer helps hold it up and um, then I'm gonna set aside most everything in this kit now one of the special treats we have for you this month is a miniature version of our awesome grid ruler and this is just a wonderful tool for you to always have on hand and you'll notice it even has a little ring for a keychain in case you really want to keep it handy or keep it in your purse I don't know it's it is a great little size it's one and a half by six inches and it still has the zero center on one side and then zero to six on the other now if yours doesn't look like this and you're wondering why yours isn't clear it's because there is a protective coating on one side of this acrylic so this side has been screen printed so it's going to look backwards to you make sure you just peel away the the protective liner and then you'll have a clear ruler a lot of our um shoppers who have purchased the ruler are wondering why it's not clear and that would be why so just go ahead and remove that backing it comes off quite easily and then just pitch that so here's your ruler i'll set aside these beautiful ribbons some tags here and then um, i'm going to go ahead and file these um, photo mats in the appropriate pocket to get things started let's grab my instructions here let's see where these photo mats live Okay, take three light blue photo mats and go ahead and put those in pocket one and two. And then we need three dark blue photo mats and one brown photo mat going in pocket three and four. Next, I'll take two brown and two burgundy, add those to pocket five and six. And finally, the, the last burgundy photo mat will go in pocket seven and eight. Now I went ahead and tested this myself. Let's just say you're brand new to this and I'm going way too fast already. In, if you're watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and click the little settings icon. It looks sort of like a, like a little a nut or a bolt. Click on that little icon and you can control the speed of the video. You can go like 0.75 or even 0.5. And if you do that, it slows me way down. In fact, I might even put you to sleep. <laughs> but go ahead and give that a try. It really slows down those trimming instructions. So that way I can go at like what feels to me like a more normal pace and you can slow it down to your pace. And then eventually with some practice, you'll pick it up again and end up going right along with me at the live 100% speed. All right, our next task will be to put the paper in order that we'll be trimming them. So we're going to start out by taking one of the burgundy prints. So you can tell the difference between the two prints. This one we're calling the burgundy. This one's the, the blue. So take one burgundy print from your stack of papers and put it face down on your work surface. And I usually hold the other papers up off my work surface. That way you can access from the top and see a lot more easily what you're grabbing. Then I'm, I'm going to take one of the blue prints and put it face down. Digging a little further, I'm gonna find a brown plane. This is actually a super heavy stock. This is 100 pound cover weight. And then I'm gonna find a dark blue. So you might wanna just compare the two blues of paper we've included in this kit. They're both pretty light, but this is the lightest one. We're, we're gonna look for one of the darker blues. Next, we're gonna find some cut aparts. Let's start with the one that has the word music in this blue box in the left corner. And then the other single sheet of cut aparts as well, it has the word love on it. Okay, we'll continue to sort the paper. Let's find the other burgundy print. A brown plane. <laughs> a dark blue plane. Then the blue print. We'll put that face down again. We'll eventually flip over the whole stack two light blue planes and two burgundy planes that should be everything you had in your kit flip it all back over and we're back back to this burgundy print on top 
I'm looking at page two of my instructions and we're just going to begin with this sheet of paper. And if there's any doubt from what you see on camera here too, I always superimpose the prints that get trimmed so you can see how they're placed into the trimmer. However, in this case, I have a special trick for you. We're not going to be using the trimmer to separate this, although you can. So I have both trimming instructions in here, but we're going to tear these pieces with the help of a larger grid ruler. So if you happen to have a three by 14 grid ruler, let's grab that. For now, I'm going to set aside my trimmer and I'll use my grid ruler. And the first thing we're going to do is place the paper. Now, I, I'm going to do this the right handed way. Just flip everything if you're left handed. I just want to be tearing with my right hand and supporting with my left hand. And you'll just swap that if you are left handed. So, on this print, I see this larger area right here on the left where these larger flowers are. I'm just going to take my three inch ruler and tear off a three inch strip. So, to do that, I don't need to take my ruler and then mark three inches, three inches, three inches, and then line it up with that. The ruler already is three inches. So all I need to do is align the ruler with the edge of the paper, press down firmly on the ruler, and then tear. Ta-da! A three inch piece of paper. We're gonna set this aside and file that in a minute. And then I'm gonna flip it over completely. So now my small flowers are here in the lower left, and I'm gonna tear it two inches. So the ruler is three inches total, and um, from, from here to the first bold line is one inch, and then to the second bold line is two inches. So there you go, two inches. I'm gonna line that bold mark with the edge of my paper, and now I know my ruler is exactly two inches from the edge, nice and level. Set the smaller two inch piece aside. Now this next tear is gonna happen from here to here. I'm gonna wanna go up five inches. Okay, so sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult because my ruler is only three inches wide. You know, one thing you could do is um, just go ahead and measure five inches out. This is where you want to tear, and you can move your ruler that way. Or you could also marry two rulers. So you could do that with an eight by eight. Three plus two is five. Now I have exactly five inches from the edge. Or you can even use your little guy. So now if I marry this up with this, and I go one, two inches of my little ruler this way, and then three inches of this. So two plus three is five inches. Press on the larger ruler and tear. Ta-da! Got a five inch piece. Okay, now I'm gonna tear this remaining section into three and a half inch squares. So once again, I'll combine my two rulers. This one's three, and I'm gonna steal a half of an inch from this one. Isn't that clever? I'm just gonna flip it just to make sure it's level. Okay, so just tear this in half. And then I'm gonna rotate this piece, find three and a half inches again by marrying up the two rulers, and tear. And I'll repeat for this other piece. Three plus a half is three and a half, done. And I've got four squares, ta-da! A five by seven inch piece and two large strips. I'm gonna grab my trimmer and accordion pocket file. Okay, that largest three inch strip that we made first goes in pocket one and two, as well as the two inch strip. And then the five by seven piece also goes in pocket one and two. And then all the four remaining other squares go in pockets seven and eight. Now, if you would prefer not to tear the paper, I kind of like the look for this vintagey feel, but if you prefer to just trim it, follow the instructions um, that start in the second sentence. It just gives you all the numbers and all the traditional trimming uh, style. That's in step one on page two. Okay, next comes the blueprint. We'll place this in the trimmer with the treble clef in the lower right corner. Of course, um, tearing is optional as well, um, but we'll go ahead and trim this at nine and three quarters. So again, if you're new, find nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half, nine and three quarters, making sure you're going to the left and 10 should be the, the nearest number that you can see. So nine and three quarters, and then all the way down to three and three quarters. Take this large piece and put it in pocket three and four. Then this is a six by 12 right now. Let's cut it horizontally at eight and four. 
Now the first two pieces that we trim, they're the darkest, those go in pocket seven and eight, and then the lighter one goes in pocket three and four. If you don't get them sorted out like that, it doesn't really matter, but just people like to do it exactly the way I show. So um, this other strip goes in pocket three and four. Then the heavyweight brown plain, this paper is so heavy, it sounds a little bit different even when I trim it. And we'll cut at 10 and three quarters. 10 and 3 quarters, 9 and a half. Make sure you stabilize on each cut, especially with a paper this heavy. And then 6 and a quarter. Rotate this large piece and cut at 8 and a half, and 4 and a quarter. Gather up those two rectangles that are the same size, and we'll put those in pockets 7 and 8. And now we have this rectangle. Let's trim that horizontally at six and three. Go ahead and file those two same sized rectangles in pocket one and two and give a little shout out to, um, let's see, one of two scraps. Okay, now we're gonna do some weird numbers here on this um, three and a quarter by 12. Let's trim it horizontally at 10 and 3 quarters, 8 and 3 quarters, 6 and a half, and 4 and a quarter. All right, this largest rectangle you made, 5 and 6. Then there's going to be like this whole stack of all of this stuff here. So you have two rectangles the same. You want to put one in pocket 3 and 4 and the other in seven and eight. Then there's one more smaller rectangle, one and two, and this is a scrap. Then you have two strips that are the same size. Put one in pocket three and four, and the other in pocket five and six. Off to the dark blue plane. We're gonna make some narrow paper ribbons. So start out at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. 11 and a quarter and then slide all the way to seven and three quarters and four rotate the four by twelve so it's horizontal and slice at six okay put these two rectangles in pockets seven and eight and then we're gonna trim this into some squares. This is the three and three quarter by 12 right now. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up the three squares and place them in pocket five and six. And there should be a smaller rectangle. It's gonna go in pocket one and two. Next, grab this uh, three and a half by 12. We'll trim at 11. Eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. You should have four pieces the same exact size. We'll put those in pocket one and two. And then you have this smaller piece. We're using that in seven and eight, believe it or not. And then we have three really narrow strips. Put one of them, or two of them rather, in pocket one and two and the other in seven and eight. Next, we're moving on to the cut-aparts. And as a general rule, I place the narrowest cut-aparts on the right, these strips, so that those go off first and I can keep the majority of the paper on the base of the trimmer as long as possible. Also, if you're new, you're gonna notice some tiny little registration marks. Those little gray marks kind of running along the edge and those indicate where to trim and you'll find those at all intersecting points and then at the bottom as well. Um, but I will try to give you some numbers that maybe help you identify that you have the right spot. So if I place this into the trimmer with favorite song on the right and if I find 10 and a half inches, that should come pretty close to aligning with the blade, the outside edge of your stainless steel blade if you're using this trimmer. Another reason why I love this trimmer. As we cut, I want you to allow these pieces to pile up and then we'll file them together. Now we're sliding down to 10 and nine and a half and eight and a half, 
seven and a half, six, and four and a quarter. Okay, we're gonna rotate and we'll cut with the music on the left. We'll cut that at six and a quarter. And then this gets filed in pocket three and four. Now this is two pe uh, three pieces actually that need to be separated. So again, I'm gonna just take the narrowest piece on the right. So it's basically going in the trimmer upside down and I'll cut at two and a half, right on that registration mark. And then I'll rotate again so the tag is on the left and trim at three and a half. Okay, so this gets pocketed in one and two. Song lyrics, seven and eight. And this beautiful little collage, one and two. We have one more piece that needs to be separated. Actually, several. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna freestyle cut these words apart. In the end, we, we end up just trimming really, really close to the, to the box. So I'm just gonna cut in between each box and I think you can probably eyeball that as well. Leave them in the order they land. This next cut I'm gonna have you do at nine and a quarter. That's to remove the last sing and then slide it down to six and a quarter. Put this oval shaped piece in pocket three and four the treble clef in one and two. Then we have the word sing, one and two. Smile, seven and eight. Love, five and six. Dance, three and four. Now I'll carefully try to pick up the remaining strips with my left hand, my non-dominant hand, so I can deal them out with my right hand. So music acts like a magic key, seven and eight. Then we have some florals, five and six. Um, let's see, next in your stack might be Sing Your Heart Song. That goes with three and four. As do the two just uh, plain non-text strips, three and four. And then Untold Story, that's one and two. That wraps up the cut aparts uh, for the first sheet. Now the second one, same principle applies. Narrow piece on the right, and we'll go ahead and slice that at ten and a half ish. <laughs> and then slide down to seven and a half. And four and a quarter. Rotate so that the narrow boxes are on the right. We'll cut at 10 and 9 and 6 and a quarter again. This larger element, 5 and 6, and then you have find your very own voice, that's 3 and 4. Have this aqua strip here, 1 and 2. And you also have these two squares that need to be separated. I'm going to go ahead and file both of these in 1 and 2. And we have this larger strip, Funny How a Melody, that's five and six. And I'm going to trim this. We had the word love on the left so that the narrowest piece is on the right. I'll cut it ten, eight, six, and four. All right, love, that goes in five and six. Then I'll pick up the remaining rectangles. I can't explain, but I can, I'll find a song that can, how true that is. Um, three and four. You may say I'm a dreamer, five and six. Music is life, seven and eight. And then um, we just have the florals, that goes in five and six. All that's left to file is all it takes is one song to bring back, that's three and four. And ta-da, we don't have any more papers to trim. So that's all of it. After setting aside the trimmer, the papers are sort of all ready to go for us in a really cool order. Um, again, if this might be review for a lot of you, but the remaining pieces are prepared to help us assemble our pages in order from layout number eight to layout number one in double page spreads. So what I'm gonna have you do is imagine like a 12 by 24 area in front of you. This is the middle of that area take the entire remaining stack of papers and place it to the left of that center mark. 
and then slide the top sheet over to the right. Okay, that's going to give you the base for layouts seven and eight. And then also turn uh, to page four of your instructions and at the bottom you'll find the image for layouts seven and eight. And notice how you can see that the brown paper is on the left and the burgundy print is on the right. I think maybe this just gets rotated one turn. And then I'm mimicking exactly what I'm seeing in this picture. Do you have to do it that way? Absolutely not. I always remember that. It's your own darn page. So if you're not doing any of this, that's fine. It just um, is just a one way, one of many ways to, to make things out of this uh, collection. Okay, so here's the other important thing. Instead of emptying pocket one and two, you need to go ahead and empty pockets seven and eight. We're going to work, work our way from back to front so that when this is all sort of dry fitted, um, layout number one's on top and we have the ability still to fix or change or move things around if we want to. Right out of the gates, I'm going to plot this burgundy photo mat in the right corner here and just give a little separator between that and the rest of the layout with that thin strip. This border strip goes across the left. Now, if you just kind of, if you're doing this with me and you're not fine, I'm just, you know, grabbing the pieces that I see and figuring out where they go, you might do the exact same thing. Like, for example, when I teach this in a classroom, I'm just kind of quiet and people just start working and concentrating really hard on on what they're doing and where they're putting it and they're just grabbing the pieces that they have. So of course, whatever you whatever you wanna do, you can pause me and then if you have a question, go back and, and check it out, the answer. Um, but this to me is probably the most relaxing and therapeutic part of the whole process is just um, determining where all these pieces go because it's like it's all there you don't have to think so hard it's so fun okay so basically everything needed uh, that everything that came out of the pocket is in here except for I don't think I got my word my tiny little word smile and I'm missing one other thing here okay so I'll walk you through a few of the things here one of the things I did on this uh, narrow blue strip is simply eyeball a 45 degree angle cut from the corner to the center and I did that you know just by glancing if you would like to have it more precise you can certainly use your grid ruler to sort of help find what that center is and I pretty much hit it spot on the money so um, but absolutely the ruler can be used to help with this and that gets sandwiched between this rectangle and then the music is life element it give, just gives it a nice little touch Next, you can take scissors, or you could do this with a ruler and craft knife, and just trim away. I just left that little blue rim around the words, and trim it away with scissors. And now you have the word smile, that's kind of great. Then we have these adorable little uh, scalloped tags, and I'm using our ink applicator brush and some earth ink to add a little bit of aging. And it just, that brush just really gives it a nice soft rim and helps differentiate the tag from what's on top of it and what's behind it, right? So that's kind of a nice touch. I like to use that for this, a lot of things in this collection. And you can center the word smile. So this is designed to fit perfectly onto the element and um, then that's placed on top of the left side of the layout there. Another thing I did is just trimmed off a, a, at an angle two opposing angles of the ribbon and fold it in half the way it wants to go. If you, want, if you want, you can also ink the edge. Okay, then fold this in half and just attach it to the top here with a staple or a tiny attacher or whatever you happen to prefer to use. And that gets placed right back on here and sort of build a little collage. Now, one of the other goodies I didn't, I didn't mention quite yet about this collection is this nifty roll of flower petal washi tape. So what's unique about this is that the, the roll is, is just all flower petals. Isn't that cool? So I have a few started here. So then you can literally, from the roll, peel off just a flower petal and you can add it as a little embellishment to your assembly of cut aparts and prints here, wherever you want. You get the idea. And it's washi tape, so you can rearrange it, pick it up, move it around, whatever you want to do. Um, I absolutely love these, and I think they're they're pretty brand new to the whole washi tape scene. Um, so I was real flower petal happy <laughs> in this kit, and I think you'll find yourself in the same boat. It's just so much fun to work with those. 
And um, let's see, am I missing? Oh, there's one other little detail on this that I'd love to share with you. And that is the, the movement of this flower element into the foreground. And this might be old news to many of you. It might be new to some of you. But once you decide where you want your, your photo mat to be, you can take a pencil and mark the edge of the photo mat where it meets the edge of the floral image, for example. So I add a little pencil mark here, here. I guess I really didn't need it here. Then what you can do, and I know some of you don't always love to work with a craft knife, but we have these gorgeous blue cutting mats here at Club Scrap. If you don't have a nice one, I, I can recommend that. And I'm gonna start with my craft knife at the pencil mark and work my way around the flower petal. So everything from that flower shape below the pencil mark needs to be trimmed. And I'll just work my way. Make sure you're as comfortable as you possibly can be. This angle probably isn't best. So again, I'm just making sure I've made a good cut here so that this can be lifted. And look at that, there it lifts. All I need to do now is slide that photo mat under the flower petal and I've officially moved it into the foreground. Cool, right? I could do the same thing with like this flower if I wanted to, maybe these petals, it'd be pretty to have that in the foreground, however you wanna do that. We can take a second and look at the final pages when everything's all glued down, but here's that flower and you can see from the back how it peeks through to the back of the layout and the finished little banner right here and there's my cute little sticker. And um, that narrow strip, sometimes our adhesive is just too fat to adhere to this. So I always use a grid ruler and bookbinding glue to help adhere this uh, straight and easily onto the base of my page. Then for layout seven, there's the finished collage on the left edge. I just love how that turned out. I also inked the edges of the word smile, just very subtle. These pieces here, I used a grid ruler also to evenly space and align them, make sure they're nice and level. To prepare for the next pair of pages, I'll take up layout seven, it's a very thick, heavy piece of paper, pick that up and slide it on top of layout eight that it's already completed. So if I don't adhere all of this today, if I just simply slide this into a bag, yes, all the pieces will go down to the bottom, but everything is right where it needs to be and it's very, very easy to sort of reassemble that and put your layout together at a later time. So I like to do my cutting when my mind is really fresh and if I have assembly to do, that's a great thing to do at a crop with your friends or maybe while watching a movie. You can concentrate while cutting and then have fun while you're creating. Okay, this is layout five and six, so I need to go ahead and empty that pocket. And this time, I'm just gonna do a double check to make sure I get everything out of that pocket, including my little bird, Love. And once again, this is the part where you sort of freestyle. You look at what's in your hand. I usually try to start with the larger pieces, the larger elements, and distribute those onto the paper first, and then work my way to the smaller things. Sometimes we need to place things a certain way so that we can determine where something is going to be like for example these three pieces need to be placed across the bottom so i can determine where this lives or you could always start with these larger photo mats on top this beautiful burgundy color is just so pretty and then the the love rectangle has a partner to nest with isn't that nice love should have a partner <laughs> okay then we'll place this horizontally here our large piece down in the lower right and we'll accent with some flowers you could put a little picture on top of that if you have one that fits right there and then the word love is going to go on a craft colored tag with the same treatment as before trim ink edges you can staple the ribbon on to the end of this and that's going to go in that spot something new i want to show you is how i embellished the lower portion of this with this type of a ribbon attachment. And after discovering this, I found it like on a wedding invitation uh, website. And I thought, now that's a cool bow for card making, for scrapbooking, because there's no knot in it. It's simply two looped ribbons and there's nothing dimensional about it. So if you're mailing something, don't you hate how that, that ribbon lump <laughs> occurs and then you're worried about it, making it through the post office without an extra charge? So this kind of eliminates that, that fear and there's a pretty easy way to go about making this and I'm gonna show you how that works. So what I basically do is fold the ribbon in half and decide where you want the loop 
to occur. So I'm going to have the loop occur more to the right side of this. So fold the ribbon in half so it's going to end kind of where you want it, want that loop to be. And then go up a little bit past the edge of the paper and give it a trim. You'll need some tape or a good hardy washi tape for this. And all I'm going to do is tape the ends on the back, kind of at the spot where I wanted the ribbon to be. Okay, now the next thing, I'll take some additional ribbon and thread the end through the original loop and pull. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And then just trim the other tail, grab some more tape, make sure it flattens nice. Take that end down and now you have this really gorgeous one dimensional embellishment. So I'm going to do this quite a bit this month since I, this is when I discovered it and will also be in my Bow Basics video that I need to make some time to film. It's been a little busy around here lately, um, but this is a wonderful little embellishment. Let's take a look at that finished layout again. Here it is where I've added the uh, washi tape flower petals and the finished bow. Did some ink, inking on the edges just to add a little depth and warmth to these pages. Then with layout number five, very simple. Uh, I just attached some of that ribbon, just folded in half, and then with some foam adhesive, made that the word love pop a little bit in that spot. And then here is a basic bow. Perhaps I could review that with you quickly. Um, I also like the basic bow because it does not have a large knot. Well, it does have a knot. I just study the way the ribbon wants to, to flow. It does not want to go this way. It wants to go around this way. And in cooperation with that, I will make two <laughs> ears to make the two bunny ears or two loops crisscross the loops. So one of the loops is in front and one's in the back, right? So take the loop from the front and swing it through that hole below and pull. And initially I always like to say it doesn't look very nice at all, but once you start shaping the size of your, the loops of the ribbon that you want, just shape and then pull. You can keep shaping, determine what you want the front to be, because sometimes one side will be more attractive than the other. Maybe I'll go this way, nope, yes. You just kind of have just a little tiny bit of patience and boom, all of a sudden you have a really pretty bow to attach to your page, okay? So trim the tails and there you have it. A very simple, basic bow. Very sweet on this page, indeed. Now it's time to slide and stack. So let's move this piece over on top of the layout next to it. And then one more sheet slides over. So now I have everything I need for layouts three and, three and four. And on page three of the instructions, layout three and four is right here at the bottom. And everything I need for this said layout should be in the pocket labeled three and four. Hooray! Get all the pieces. Okay, so again, larger elements kind of start the show. So we'll take this beautiful piece. I am, I'm a musician, so I know that the music is going to be upside down when I place it here, but it's okay. I just wanted more flower, flowers up on the top. <laughs> yeah, it's all about flowers, isn't it now? Then this across the bottom, that anchors everything down there. Finally, we have another larger piece here with the treble clef. That'll be in the lower left corner and across the top we should have a nested title so the brown kind of draws the eye to this beautiful expression and this find your own voice is sort of part of that quote so i'm going to like layer that right on top now here we have this lovely piece and it has square corners but round art and i have found great success in simply matching the distance from the edge of the border to the edge of the paper with my scissors. And if you ink the edges after doing this, any imperfections in your cutting will be completely disguised. If you want, you can take it a step further and use a paper distressing tool to like fray the edges a little bit, and then you have a really good looking piece. No need to punch holes. All I did on this one is take some of this pretty blue ribbon and fold it in half the way it wants to go. 
bring it to the top edge here and staple. If you have a mini stapler, which I think I use, that works too. And do one on the bottom as well. Little craft tag and the word dance is part of this assemblage. Okay, we have a few more elements here. We've got a little border strip that's gonna kind of marry up right below this one. And then to mirror that, it's gonna go vertically on the right, kind of divide the area between these two sides. A dark brown mat topped with this musical print. So beautiful. Beneath that, a dark blue mat, and then two blue mats here. There's a music quote. And I can't explain has a little nesting mate. Give that some anchoring as well. Now, if you're new and you're not sure about how you to angle photo mats, um, here's a rule of thumb. If I'm not gonna use them straight, and I know some people just can't stand it any other way, then that's fine too. But when you tilt mats, just be really careful not to let the corners touch the edge of the paper or each other. So what I recommend to solve the tangent problem here is simply make one higher than the other and overlap them slightly. So tilt, overlap, higher, lower. No more tangents, nothing's touching an edge and the corners aren't touching as well. So it's kind of a, just a good rule of thumb for when you tilt your photo mats. So maybe that's why you haven't been tilting them because it just doesn't feel right. To me, this feels right, okay? Then I will, let's take a look at those finished pages. Ooh, added a nice big basic bow, oh, that satin ribbon with the silver edge. Um, this is sort of like a just subtle off-white satin, double-sided, so that you don't have to worry about which side of the bow you use with this metallic edge. Mm -mm -mm. So pretty. Balanced up my ribbon usage over to the left side of the layout by simply stretching the ribbon across, but only allowing a portion of it to be revealed between this layer and this one. So that's where that silver comes from. And then I accented the tag here with just two simple flower petals from the washi tape roll. Um, I think there's like 90 petals on that one roll, so it's gonna go a long way. Use them everywhere if you want to. Oh, they're so beautiful. Then I'll slide and stack the next piece on there. And lo and behold, this is layout one and two. It couldn't go any faster. And unless you're at 50, you're operating at like 50% pace, right? Then it's, I'm still going really slow, which might be nice. Okay, so I'm looking at image one and two. Looks like our larger piece with the flowers is gonna go here with the torn edge closest to the bottom and not quite touching, so you can kind of see that better. And then we'll differentiate the color by adding a thin strip of blue right butt up against it and then this little sweet quote here behind every favorite song there's an untold story and you can be the storyteller now and above that we can add two blue mats and a vertical element so the way i position this is with this about an eighth of an inch away from the border strip and then align the top edges here it gives it a nice anchored feel um, we got some smaller elements to place, but maybe I'm going to get rid of this large one and put it right here and nest a light blue mat on top of that. Straight edge of this piece on the left, keep the torn edge on the right, and we'll separate that with another blue strip. So what we did on the left, we're kind of doing on the right, but doing it vertically. Then along the very right edge, we'll take these four rectangular dark blue. Now let's say you have uh, two photos you'd rather put there, just go ahead and cover the gap between them. No problem. Two horizontal photos here with the brown, and we can fill in the space with this sweet quote and this little square element. And then above that, a tag. I'm going to show you a trick uh, to create the tag with the help of that ruler. Here we'll put the music our nested trouble cluff. We got a nice little paper for him. That goes like so. And then I'm gonna show you, once again, I'm eyeballing to the center at a 45 degree angle. Trim the V. It didn't quite make, land that one so well. Your mini ruler has a 45 degree angle on it, so if you want it to be perfect, it, it really can be done. Right, so this peeks out above and below our little music 
square and then you can trim your word sing if you want ink the edges with earth and let me tell you what happened here okay so you have one more of these I didn't use it on my page you know why because I found it on the floor when I was done <laughs> So go ahead and use your little craft tag if you want. See, this is the advantage of watching the video. You can find out all the things that you didn't know if you hadn't watched it. Okay, so this goes right here. And wow, I mean, I, I think this is such a beautiful little assembly. Um, on the finished pages, again, we'll look at page two. Oh, yes, the tag. I promised you the trick for the tag. This uses the craft knife and cutting mat again and the, the little gadgety ruler that we provided all right the reveal beyond the the burgundy edge here is one eighth of an inch i want to match that on my angle every cube on the ruler is an eighth of an inch so if i just take the first dotted line on my ruler and line it up with the burgundy border and slice it's perfect it, it's perfectly straight and matches the the border on the other three sides now i have the perfect tag shape and you can tie or staple ribbon to the top of this and add it. In my case, I did punch the hole and then tie it on this beautiful, uh, gorgeous like, taffeta patterned ribbon to that. And here's the first page with its beautiful assembly, the washi tape flower petals, and then two of these two elements were adhered with foam adhesive circles, which is a perfect uh, spot for that to be used. Well, I can just imagine these finished pages completed with wedding pictures, baptism photos, rites of passage, engagement parties. I have a couple of those coming up. I have a bridal shower coming up. Um, even little girls, little boys, it doesn't really matter. Remember that color is what really dictates what you use. So if your husband's wearing a burgundy shirt on Father's Day, go ahead and, try and put those pictures on these papers. I bet it will be beautiful. Okay, well, if you're a card maker, I want to invite you to join me as well for the Beautiful Noise card making workshop. Don't miss it. I hope to see you there.